turn with me to Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 31, one verse in your hearing there, verse 38. Then we're going to jump to Jeremiah, 29th chapter, verse 11 there. If you don't have it, thank God for our media team that's on your screen. Those of you at home, I dare you just to bless him like you're losing your mind in your living room, wherever you're watching this, because the Spirit of God is in the sanctuary. And I know that he's in your home, he's in your car. I know that you experience the presence of God. You're experiencing the presence of God right now as I speak. I dare you just to yield to him as he begin to speak to you. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord is recorded. Verse 8. The Lord himself goes before you. And he will be with you. The Lord himself goes before you. And he will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. What type of plans? Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. For I know the plans that I have for you. God, thank you for your word. For a brief moment that I have with you, I want to preach from the sermonic theme. If he did it before. Can you just shake a neighbor real quick and tell that neighbor, say, neighbor, can I encourage you? If he did it before. <laughs> Woo! I don't know who needed to hear that. I'm not even in the message yet, but you can get your praise right now. You can thank him for if he did it before. What are you scared about? What are you afraid about? Try your tears if he did it before. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. There was once a criminal who was brought before a king for committing a crime. It was the king's duty to punish the criminal for the crime he committed. So the king took him to a room where there was a rope and a noose over a stool and a big black scary looking door, an old looking door. Then the king gave the criminal two choices. He said, number one, you can choose to get hung on this rope. Or number two, 
you can open this big, black, scary-looking old door and accept whatever fate is waiting behind it. Apparently, this was a no-brainer for the criminal. So he quickly chose the rope. Number one, number one, give me the rope. After the noose was secured around his neck, the criminal asked the king, out of curiosity, what's behind that big black door? The king responded, it's, it's funny you should ask because everyone picks the rope and then asks what's behind the big black door. The criminal, even more curious now, persisted in his questioning. So, so what's there? What's behind the door? Then the king responded, freedom, as he kicked the stool from under the criminal's feet. Freedom. The moral of the story is, don't allow fear to dictate your decisions and the choices that you make. Howard P. Lovecraft said, the oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. And the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown is an intense fear of uncertain and unknown situations. Those with this fear may experience significant distress or anxiety due to a perceived lack of information about a situation. Fear of the unknown refers to anxiety around unpredictability, unpredictable situations or events. Some people experience this at a persistent or chronic level known as xenophobia. Lack of predictability and control is often, often contributing factors to this type of fear. So, Victory Walkers, people of God, why is fear of the unknown so scary? It's scary because we fear what we don't know. The brain is constantly trying to predict what will happen next, allowing it to prepare the body and mind in the most effective way possible. We push uncertainty to the forefront of our minds and we become overwhelmed by the possibilities and implications of not knowing. As a result, our decision-making process becomes greatly influenced by this uncertainty. We change our behavior. We, we change our choices and even our own beliefs in an attempt to fill in the gaps. In other words, we improvise instead of standing on God's word when we can't figure it out or we don't know what to expect. I need you to understand that the enemy will use different circumstances. He'll use different situations to trigger this type of fear. He'll, he'll use fear of new environments like a new school, if you will, or a new job, a new work assignment. He'll use fear of not knowing if you'll get into an accident while you're on your way to work or on your way to the grocery store. Fear of not knowing if you'll survive your next traffic stop. Fear of not knowing what the doctor will tell you at your next physical. Fear of not knowing what lies ahead of you in your future. Fear of something happening to your family or even loved ones. And he'll use fear of what's happening in the world at large, just to name a few. People of God, the enemy knows that fear of the unknown can be paralyzing. And that's exactly where he wants us in our walk with God. He wants us stuck. He wants us at a standstill and afraid to move forward in faith. He wants us afraid to step out on faith and afraid to trust God in his word. But I need you to understand that the only way that he's able to accomplish this, the only way that he's able to rob us of our faith is when we have cycles of forgetfulness. 
Somebody say cycles of forgetfulness. I need you to understand that throughout the Old Testament, we have witnessed a recurring cycle of forgetfulness with the children of Israel, the Israelites. Whenever Israel would face persecution and they would face tribulation, they would cry out to God for help. And in God's faithfulness, he would deliver them. Then as time would pass on and everything was good, everything was great, they would forget about his faithfulness time and time again. They will forget about how God turned the mighty Nile River into blood. They forget about God bringing frogs upon the land of Egypt and blanketing the ground with lice. They forget about God filling every Egyptian home with flies and even how he killed their livestock with pestilence. They forget about the boils that broke out on the Egyptians and the hail that God rained down on the land. They forget about the darkness that filled the land of Egypt and the killing of every Egyptian first born from every human to even down to their livestock. They forget about the miraculous parting of the Red Sea where they would walk through it on dry ground. They forget about how God led them as a pillar of cloud by day and by a pillar of fire by night. They forget about the manna that he provided that it would blanket the, the ground every single morning. They forget about the quail that he provided in the evening while they were in the wilderness. They forget about the water that he caused to gush out of a rock when they were thirsty. They forget about the parting of the Jordan River when they carried the Ark of the Covenant across on dry ground. They forget about the walls of Jericho falling down flat. Israel would forget about God's faithfulness and in turn complain and grumble and sin once again. And this cycle of forgetfulness would repeat over and over again. This is why people of God, God would instruct them to set up memorials and pillars of remembrance because they were a forgetful people. But despite, I'm so glad that despite their doubts, despite their grumbling, despite their complaining and their fears and grumbling, God remained steadfast in his faithfulness. But, but uh, can I come down your road for a second? Can we, can we be transparent for five quick seconds? Uh, please trust in no victory walkers. Please, please understand that the children of Israel are not by themselves in this cycle. They're not by themselves. Look at that neighbor say, neighbor, they ain't by themselves. How many times do we find ourselves in the cycle of forgetfulness? How many times have you forgot about how God healed your body? How many times have you forgot about how he provided for you when they laid you off? How many times have you forgot about the ways that he made out of no way? How many times have you forgot about the doors that he opened that you know you did not deserve? How many times have you forgot about the favor that God gave you over everybody else around you that was qualified? How many times have you forgot about how God shifted things in your direction? How God turned things around? How God stepped in right in the nick of time? How many times have we forgot about how God kept the lights on? Kept us in heat in the winter? Kept us in coolness in the summer? Look at that neighbor and say, neighbor! How many times have we forgot? How many times have we forgot about God's faithfulness? We find ourselves in these cycles of forgetfulness because fear will cause us to forget about God's faithfulness. Child of God, you have to remember, you got to remember that it is in God's character, it's in God's nature that if he did it before, he is faithful to do it again. 
But can I help you out? Can, can, can I help you real quick? I'm almost done. I promise you. This ain't a long message today. Uh, can, can I help you out? Just because you don't know all the details, just because you don't know the whole plan, the full picture, doesn't mean that God does not have a plan in place. I need you to understand, child of God, you have to trust and know that when you don't have all the pieces to the puzzle, that just means it's a recipe for faith. Tell that neighbor, it's a recipe for faith. All right, can I prove it to you? Let's go to Bible. Can, can, can I prove it to you? It was a recipe for faith when God told Abram in Genesis 12 and 1 to get out from your country, from your family, and from your father's house, and go to a land, here it is, that I will show you. In other words, you ain't seen it yet. You don't know what it looks like. All you know is God said go, and when you get there, I'll let you know. It was a recipe for faith when God told Noah to build the biggest boat anyone had ever seen for a flood that has never happened before and everybody but his family thought he was crazy. It was a recipe for faith when God told Gideon to reduce Israel's army down from 32,000 men down to 300 to fight a Midian army the size of 130 35,000 soldiers. It was a recipe for faith when Jesus told Peter to step out on the boat and come walk to me on top of this water. People of God, there will be times where God will only show you part of the picture as a test to see if you trust him. There will be times where God will only reveal part of the plan. He'll only release some of the details to see where your faithfulness is. I need you to understand. I need you to trust and believe, child of God, that God fixed it that way because it's a recipe for faith. We know that the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. But God knows in his, in his, in his faithfulness, in his, in his sovereignty, in his, in, in, in his amazingness, God knows that there will be times that we find ourselves in cycles of forgetfulness where our faith will begin to waver. So I need you to shake a neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, whenever you need help in your faith, check the record of God's faithfulness. Check the record of God's faithfulness. When your faith needs a boost, when your faith needs a shot in the arm, check the record of God's faithfulness. All right, can we go back to the book? When the Hebrew boys was faithful to not bow down to, the, to King Nebuchadnezzar's golden image, God was faithful to deliver the Hebrew boys from the destruction of the fiery furnace. When Daniel refused to stop praying to God and was thrown into the lion's den by King Darius, God was faithful to protect Daniel by shutting the mouths of the lions. Can I go further? When David was faithful to confront Goliath for the honor of the God of Israel, God was faithful to give him the victory over the Philistine giant. When Jonah, when Jonah ran away from God, call and ended up on a ship headed in the opposite direction in God's faithfulness he caused a great storm to arise where Jonah is thrown overboard and then swallowed up by a great fish the Bible says the Bible says that three days later the great fish spit Jonah out up on dry, on dry land and Jonah immediately went to Nineveh to fulfill his mission and his calling I need y'all to understand that this story of God's faithfulness is not just a story of physical rescue, but this is also a story of God's spiritual rescue. What am I talking about? Jonah's disobedience and running away from God's call is a symbol of our own rebellion and resistance to God's will. 
You might as well shake yourself in and come alive right here. I need you to understand, but just as God was faithful to rescue Jonah, he is faithful to offer salvation and redemption to those who will turn to him in repentance, which brings us to the greatest example of faithfulness. Do you want to know what the greatest example of faithfulness is? Do you want to hear what the greatest example of faithfulness is? I need you to go with me to John. 316 the Bible says for God the greatest good so loved the greatest action the world the greatest need that he gave the greatest example his only son the greatest sacrifice that whoever the greatest invitation believes in him the greatest response should not perish the greatest horror but have eternal life the greatest gift I need you to share Take a neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, check the record of God's faithfulness. He's a faithful God. Check the record of his faithfulness. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 32 and 4 that he is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. I'm talking about our God. The Bible says in Joshua 21 and 45, not one of all of the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Not one of God's promises to Israel failed. It says everyone was fulfilled. And I love how the New Living Translation says it. It says not a single one of all the good promises the Lord had given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken came true. I need to speak that in your spirit. Everything that he had spoken came true. Everything that he had spoken came true. Every promise that he spoke that came out of his mouth, every promise came true. Tell your neighbor, check the record. Can I go further? The Bible says in Psalms 33 and 4, for the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all that he does. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, your soul, and your body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here it is. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Uh, did you hear the word of the Lord? The one who calls you. The one who calls you by name. The one who knows the very hairs that's numbered on your head. The one who calls you. He is faithful and he will do it. I need you to shake another neighbor and say, neighbor, if he did it before, he will do it again. He'll do it again. So we see in the text, in Deuteronomy chapter 31, I'm almost done here. Deuteronomy 31 and 8, God assures his people that the Lord himself goes before you and he will be with you. The Lord himself goes before you and he will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He says, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. I need y'all to understand. I need you to understand that God is not sending anybody else. This is not an assignment that he's delegating to the angels. He's not delegating to anybody else. Woo! But the Lord himself, woo! the God of the universe, the God that has all power, the God that made the heavens and the earth, the God that formed us out of the dust, the God that called, that pulled up the crust of the earth and called it a mountain. The same God, he said he is the one that will go before you and he will be with you at the same time. Can I go further? I need you to note that this is not a typo. 
This is not an error because the God that we serve is omnipresent, which means he is everywhere at the same time. What am I trying to tell you? You got to understand this means that he's able to go ahead of us and prepare the way for us according to his promises. He's able to go ahead of us and order our steps. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He's able to go ahead of us while being present with us at the same time to protect us, to cover us, to block the arrows of the enemy, to block the attacks of the enemy, to keep you from falling. He's that type of God. Look at that neighbor and say the God that we serve is in an awesome God. He's an amazing God. That's why he tells his people, do not be afraid. And he encourages us to not be discouraged. Why? Because fear can paralyze us. Fear can prevent us from moving forward in faith. Fear will keep us from stepping out and going to Nineveh. Fear will keep us from doing what God tells us to do. But I need you to understand that God's faithfulness is the antidote to fear. When we trust in his faithfulness, when we trust in his word, when we trust that he is who he says he is, fear loses its power over us. I need you, can I take it further? In the text, we also find the assurance of God's faithfulness in Jeremiah 29 and 11. When you look in the context of this text, child of God, you'll see that the Israelites had been taken into exile in Babylon due to their disobedience and rebellion against God. In the midst of their despair, people of God, in the midst of their despair, God was faithful to speak through the prophet Jeremiah, assuring them of his plans for their restoration. It is there, it is here, child of God, that we find God's unwavering faithfulness and his incredible promise to the exiled Israelites. God says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. He says, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. We're getting ready to go home in just a minute. I need you to understand that it's important to note that despite their current circumstances, despite what was happening in their life at the moment, God assured them that he had a greater plan in store for them. Who am I talking to in here? I need you to understand that this verse serves as a beacon of hope, reminding us that God's faithfulness extends beyond our present circumstances. The faithfulness of God extends beyond what you are experiencing, what the enemy is trying to bring against you, what he's trying to plague against your mind. The faithfulness of God extends beyond what your life looks like right now. In other words, God is saying that it is not his plan to leave you where you are. God is saying it is not his plan to leave you unfulfilled. It is not his plan to leave you in a place of discouragement. It is not his plan to leave you broken. It is not his plan to leave you bound and hurt. But can I help you? Just as he delivered the Israelites from exile, he will deliver you from your own captivity. I need you to understand that you may find yourself, you may find yourself in exile. You may find yourself exiled in the wilderness of despair. You may even find yourself in a place of uncertainty. I'm ready to go now. You may find yourself, child of God, in a place of a setback of sin. But I came to remind you that the God that we serve, that is faithfulness, remain steadfast. I came to remind the victory walkers that God's faithfulness is unchanging. Did you hear what I said? His faithfulness is unchanging. You might be facing the unknown in your life. 
life right now, you might be facing the proverbial fork in the road, if you will. You might even feel a little apprehensive and fearful at the moment. But I need you to remember that the same God who let the Israelites through the wilderness is the same God that's with you right now. The same, same God that restored Israel from exile and captivity is the same God that is with you right now. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I came to tell you, just as he was faithful to Israel, he will be faithful to you. I need you to understand, child of God, that the unknown does not alter God's character. It doesn't change his promises because he remains the unchanging and faithful God who never will leave us nor will he forsake us. I don't know who needs to hear that today, but the God that we serve said, I'll never, 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 I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And that's why God told us in Malachi 3 and 6, he says, for I am the Lord and I do not change. Did you hear what God said? He says, I am the Lord. I know there's a lot of imposters. I know there's some false deities that we follow on TikTok. There's some idols that you may have set up in your life. Uh-oh, I'm out here now. There's some prophetess, lying prophetess that you're following. There's some deities, small G's, that you didn't got trapped in, looped in. But I came to tell you that despite all the best that's out there, I am the true God. I'm the only living God. And I do not change. God's faithfulness is unchanging. And what he sent me here to declare to you today that his, he did it before. If he did it before, if he did it before, if he opened doors before, if he made ways before, he is faithful to do it again. That's the message, y'all. I'm done. Good night. I gotta get in my car and go. I came to tell somebody, I don't know the hell you're facing right now. I don't know what you're fearing right now. The uncertainty that the enemy is trying to use to keep you to stand still and not walk by faith and not by sight. I don't know what the enemy is using to discourage you, but God told me to tell you, he told me to remind you that if he did it before, he's faithful to do it again because he said, I'm the same God. If I healed you before, if I opened your eyes before, if I made ways out of no ways before, if I kept you from cancer, if I healed you, if I took your blood pressure down, if I shrunk the tumor, if I healed the alopecia, if I healed the psoriasis, if I did it before, I'm more than able to do it again, because I'm the same God, there's nothing too hard for God, tell that neighbor, if he did it before, you might as well wake up, you might as well shake yourself, put the bottle up, put the pills down, leave that fear, leave that doubt behind, and recognize that because God is faithful, because it's in his character, if you call out to him, he will answer, he's a God that will never leave you, nor will he forsake you, is there anybody in here that believe the word of the Lord, say yes, say yes, yes. He's the same God 
Tell that neighbor, that's why I got faith today. Because he's the same God. I checked the record. I'm encouraged today. He's the same God. I know what the doctor told you. But remember your sister. If he healed your sister. If he healed your neighbor. He's able to heal you. He can do it. Not only can he do it. But he will do it. He's the same God. He's the same God. The same God that said let there be. And it was. Said I'm here for you. The same God. That put the stars in the heavens. The same God. That made the earth. That formed the world in six days. Is the same God. That said I'm with you. I'll be with you. I'll go before you. I got your back. I'll send goodness. I'll send mercy to follow you. The days of your life. I got your back. I don't know who's afraid, but God said, trust my word because I'm the same God. And if I did it before, If I did it before, I'm faithful to do it again. If you believe that, give God the best praise all over this place. Praise Him because His faithfulness. 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 